And from the waiting room. Okay. Uh, an email was sent out a week ago to your uh, to the email address you used to register for this class. But I will go over that information as soon as we begin. Right now, I'm just admitting people in the waiting room. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming in. Waiting, I have your waiting room for you, Emma. Thank you, Nicole. Okay. It is 1.30. I'm going to start sharing my screen. Thank you everyone for coming in today. It's an exciting workshop, engaging workshop, and very informative. Let me go ahead and make this bigger. Oh, okay, there we go. Welcome everyone. Welcome to our All the FCCGH virtual baking workshop with pastry chef Heather Slater. Before we get started, with this fun interactive workshop, I want to go over a couple of housekeeping rules and Zoom etiquette. Um, once again, I do want to remind everyone that we are having a brief little campaign known as Be a Lifelong Learner, Bring a Lifelong Learner. If you know anyone that can benefit from our classes, please invite them. They do not have to be a member of the program. You invite a friend, you could email them the information, or you could have them call our office, refer them to me and I could provide them with information for that they can join the Ali free remote learning classes, okay? Now, a couple of reminders, as some of you may already know, please remain your, uh, muted, your microphone, please stay on mute. That's just to you know, prevent the background noises from interrupting our presenter. Uh, moving forward, if you have any questions, please type them in the chat. Please become familiar with the chat. Um, questions will be addressed towards the end of the, of the uh, presentation. Also, this presentation will be recorded for university purposes. And once again, we highly encourage you to have your questions typed down in the chat. Also, I highly encourage everyone to please stay towards the end of this workshop. Once we finish off, Nicole and I will be here to assist you with the course evaluation. This is just for us to get your, feed that, your feedback um, in terms of the teaching effectiveness of the instructor. Um, and we could walk you through on how you can fill out this course evaluation, and it is anonymous. Thank you for that. That's not what is not okay. Perfect. So, Nicole, since say we have some people in the waiting room, can you please admit them? Thank you very much. They're admitted. They should be joining. Okay. Thank you, Nicole. Now, once again, uh, welcome to our OLLI at CSUDH virtual baking workshop with pastry chef Heather Slayer. Um, this is the first session that we have. Uh, for today's session, our presenter did provide you with the materials and ingredients and instructions for you to participate in the class. If you recently registered today or yesterday, you will receive an email with all the ingredients and supplies and instructions after this presentation. Now, if circumstances do allow you, you are allowed to bake along with our chef. If you are in the kitchen, that's great. If not, you are welcome to sit in and observe and still participate in the class if you have any questions or comments. That's uh, very welcome in this session. Now, in this course, our chef has provided us with baking techniques and recipes. Today's session, we have March 9 and 130, is sweets, specifically bakery style chocolate chip cookies all right now i would like to briefly introduce our presenter you may recognize her as the owner of simply sweets let me go ahead and start spotlighting for everyone please welcome pastry chef heather slater hello hello everyone thank you hammer um, Thank you. Before we get started, how many people will be baking with me? Okay, I see so far. How many people? Okay, I have one hand up. Myra, you'll be baking? Only one? That's fine. Okay. I see one. 
So who's who's making? What's God, the name? I think Godfrey Miss Snyder might be Elaine. Oh, she's on mute, but she might okay. be. I see her her camera in the kitchen. Okay. Emma, we didn't receive the information regarding what we were to have in order to bake alone. I did. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I didn't either. Um, okay, so for those that are going to bake along with me, the first thing that we're going to do is preheat our oven. Now, I know um, some of you guys don't have the recipe, but for those that do, the temperature on this recipe says preheat the oven to 375. I really don't like baking cookies at that high of a temperature, so I'm going to adjust it. Um, I want you to set your preheat your oven to 350. And you guys know your oven. So if you think 350 is too high, my sweet spot to bake is at 325. That's the temperature that I like to bake my cookies at. But I'm just going to kind of do a little bit, you know, by the book, by what the, the recipe is saying. But I wouldn't put it at 375. I think that's too high. Okay. And for those that don't know, I'm Heather, a pastry chef. I own Simply Sweets by Heather. I've been baking for ooh, maybe eight years, 10 years, something like that. And I was thinking about my story and I realized that baking kind of chose me. Um, my mother and my, bro my middle brother, Marcus, they were the ones that were the bakers of the house. And they were the ones that baked the cakes, the cookies, everything. And when I used to attempt to help them, I used to always get kicked out of the kitchen because I would burn something or I would not follow directions. So, but I was an expert at cookie dough. I love cookie dough. And I used to harass my brother to make me a couple of scoops of cookie dough. You know, I would wait until my mother and my father would go to bed. And since he helped make the cookie dough, I knew he knew where it was. So I would just harass him until he would, cave in and then he would go and get me some cookie dough and then I'll go in my room and eat it. Although now they frown and they said do not eat raw cookie dough. But I used to eat it all the time. Okay, so the first step is we need to preheat our oven to 350. And then the second most important step in baking is making sure you read the recipe. Now when I, um, like about a week before this class, I was trying out a new sugar cookie recipe. And I did read the recipe, but when I was making the cookie dough, I kind of skinned over a part, a very important part. And I was supposed to um, take one fourth of the sugar out, put it aside, and then put the rest of the sugar into the actual recipe but I put everything into the recipe. And I was looking at the dough and I was like, ooh, this does not look quite right. And then I went back to the recipe and I said, ooh, rule of thumb, always read the recipe. So the dough is a little bit too sweet. So I'm not gonna make cookies with that dough. I'm gonna do something else with the dough. And then I'll probably have some topping to kind of offset the, the sweetness. So remember, always read your recipe and make sure that you have all of your ingredients ready for you, okay? So let's begin. So the first step is we're going to cream our butter. So I'm gonna turn the mixer on and it's a little bit loud. So if you wanna adjust the sound on your computer, do so now. And also a tip with baking, most baking recipes ask or calls for unsalted butter, but you will add salt because it kind of balances out the sweet, but I like baking with salted butter. So that's what I'm using today. Okay, I'm turning the mixer on. Okay. I like to cream the butter a little bit before we start adding the sugar. Okay. 
Heather, a question came in. Can you use um, a butter substitute? Um, I would suggest making the recipe as written and then sometimes you can. And the butter substitute that works pretty well is um, Imperial, because um, it doesn't really alter the taste. But if you start getting into other margarines or other um, butter substitute, you don't want to use um, a spread. What you want to use is a stick form, like a butter, like how, you know, the, the butter. You want to use it in this kind of form because you'll get the same consistency. Can you guys see the mixer? Yes, we can see it, Heather. Oh, okay. Any more questions? Yes. We do have one. Yes, we have one question. Do you admit the added salt if you use salted butter? I do not add salt. I omit the salt if I use salted butter, unless it's one of those recipes like you know it's the new crave with the salted caramel or the, or the desserts with a little salt. Then I wouldn't add what the recipe calls for if you use salted butter, but I would add just a little bit, like maybe a fourth of a teaspoon. Thank you. But most times you don't need to add the salt if you use salted butter. Okay, we're gonna add our brown sugar. We're adding one cup of brown sugar. Oh, that's going to help with the moisture and the chewiness of the cookies. I didn't have that on mine. And then we're going to add a half a cup of sugar. And I'm using organic, vegan, unrefined sugar, but you can use your granulated sugar if that's what you have. Can't see it. Heather, also, as you're doing that, we have another question in the chat. The question is, does earth balance plant-based butter substitute come in a stick form? And if not, is it in the right consistency? Earth Balance do come in stick form. However, I used to use that, but um, it's hard to find it. Now, if you're able to find it, great. Um, my go-to now, um, if you want like a vegan butter, I use um, Country Crop. And it's mm -hmm. um, plant-based. And they have it in um, avocado oil, um, almond oil, olive oil. And there's one more, I can't remember what it is, but those three are the ones that you can find. And they're relatively um, priced reasonable. Got it. And you can find that, you can always find at Walmart. They always pretty much have it. But um, it depends on which Walmart, like if you go to the town center in Long Beach, they pretty much always have it. And then the Walmart that's on Hawthorne and um, 190th, the little smaller one, they have it. But the Walmart that's on 190th, like Normandy, I think that's the street. They, they don't carry vegan stuff, a lot of vegan stuff. And then the one that's over, you know, where the Mervins, the Walmart where the Mervins used to be, they sometimes have it. Got it. So I'm gonna turn the mixture back on. Perfect. And for those of you who are just coming in right now, uh, this session is titled Sweets, and we are doing bakery-style chocolate chip cookies. Oh, okay. Okay. Emma, um, I was told that when, when I turn the mixer on, they can't, they can see you, but they can't see the mixer. Thank you. 
No, I have them on both spotlights. Nicole, are you able to see uh, Heather yes. and the bull? Yes, it's continuing as um, we planned. So continue. Okay. I want to cream the butter and the sugar until it gets um, nice and creamy. Pema, a question came in. Miss Geraldine Crabtree asked what is being prepared um, while you're creaming that. Um, Chef, if you could just um, go over again what is what you're preparing. Oh, um, I am, we are making bakery style chocolate chip cookies today. And what I'm doing right now is creaming the butter and the sugar. Which and setting? Oh, which setting? Uh, which setting Sorry. on the mixer are you using to, to cream the first one? I mean, on the mixer. I'm starting off with the, the first, the first setting. Okay. The first setting. Miss Myra, are you baking along with the chef? Yes. Ms. Early, are you also? Ms. Champion, yes, are you? Who else is? How's your creamy? Myra, Pearly, and Goffrey, I believe. Okay. I'm baking too. Who is that? Are you baking too? Oh, are you using a spoon or are you using a mixer? I can't hear you. That was Kim. Kim, um, are you what, uh, using a mixer or using your yeah, hand? Okay. By using your reaction. So you can do and use your hand. By using by using your reaction, who's using okay. a mixer? Raise your hand. I have Miss Pearlie. I have Miss Myra. Okay. Oh, Miss Schneider is re using a, using a mixer. Okay. Kim is okay. using okay. a mixer. Good. Great. Okay, so we're gonna finish up creaming the sugar and the butter. Okay, so then we're gonna um, go ahead. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's not as creamy as I would like it because I'm using um, the organic uh, unrefined sugar, which is why a lot of um, Baking recipes call for the granulated sugar because it's smaller and it breaks down um, faster, so you don't have to cream it as long. So we're just going to move on to the eggs, and it calls for two large eggs, room temperature. And you want to add the eggs one at a time. And those are two large eggs, Heather? Yes, two large eggs. Okay. You I have another eggs, question. Have eggs, eggs. Just make sure they're large. And then okay, you just make sure they're large. Got it. We have another question. Heather coming in from the chat. As soon as you finish with the mixer. I'm sorry. That's okay. Question is uh, from Delina: Will coconut will coconut sugar work at all? Yes, it will. You can, but you know, a coconut sugar is supposed to be like an equal exchange for brown sugar. So, but you can use it. You know, you can experiment and see. But you, you know, but when you alter a recipe, 
And I'll explain that when we get into the vegan baking, you have to replace it with something. So you can use what you want, but you may not get the traditional result if you're not using the traditional ingredient, if that makes sense. Okay, at this point you wanna lift up your picture and you have your spatula and you wanna kind of scrape down and make sure you get the butter that's on the bottom of the bowl. Because you want everything to be really incorporated. And then you can um, take it off the paddle mixer because you want to make sure you mix everything. Heather, as you're doing that, we have another question coming in from the chat. Oh, good. Okay. Question Let me is, how, how, yeah. how come you added each egg separately? What would happen if you add them both together? Um, you don't want to overmix your, um, your batter. So usually they just, um, you just, um, kind of have the best way to say it. Because you just want to make sure that every, every ingredient gets incorporated. Now, if you make a mistake and it all goes in there, then you can go ahead and um, mix it and make sure it's incorporated. But usually it's like baking is just a building of flavors and we're doing everything like in stages. And so you don't want to overcrowd your uh, mixing bowl either. So we're going to put the second egg in. And baking is patient, you know. Sometimes you, you, um, and, and it's steps. And so it's all, it's always good to follow the steps. Sometimes you might make a mistake and you might not follow the steps, but you'll get a different result. So it, it may seem like you should be able to put all the eggs in there, but then believe me, when you, um, get your dough together, it may not look the way that it's supposed to look. So it's always good to go by the steps. <laughs> Okay, and I'm gonna lift it up one more time and spray it down. Okay, well then we're gonna mix it, mix it one more time. And you can increase the speed a little bit just to get it really mixed. And now we're gonna do um, vanilla. And I like using pure vanilla. I like to use a combination between um, pure vanilla and vanilla bean cane. So we're gonna Can add... you show that bottle up in the camera, Heather, on, on the tablet so that we can see what that looks so like? Thank you mixture, so much. But I use um, Nelson Massey bourbon vanilla. So that's a, a little bit more towards the use. camera up, Heather. Sorry, a little bit more to your left. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Sorry this about that. Bottle. I, I buy them in bulk. So I buy the big bottles and then I fill this one up with the um, the mixture. So we're gonna do two teaspoons, but you can measure if you like vanilla. You can add a little bit more. So we're gonna do two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. Okay. Yes. Okay. 
Okay, so now we're ready to use Can the I flower in. And so, does somebody have a question? Oh, my. Somebody have a question? Yes. No, no questions at this time. I hear your mom in <laughs> the background, Heather. So no questions right now? Not, at the, not at the moment. No questions right now. How's everybody no doing thing. with their mixing, right? Um, Okay. Nobody. Okay. So, so my my understanding. Uh, the vanilla should be incorporated. Okay. And you do not want to overmix the dough, right, Heather? I think you mentioned that. Otherwise, the cookies can flatten when they're baked. Well, that'll be uh, when you uh, when you overmix it, you get a tougher um, product. And you want cookies to be moist, buttery, mm -hmm. tender. Are we mixing everything together now? Are, are we mixing uh, the dry yeah, yeah. Uh, One moment. How did we lost? Added you? the eggs. So first we did the butter, then we added the sugar. Hold on, Heather. Let us fix this um, technical. Heather, we lost camera one. Okay. Arvin, uh -oh. one moment, everyone. Please stand by. Just hold on your mixers. Focus on camera two. We'll fix the audio. <laughs> hold on to your mixers. So just a quick recap on everything, Heather. Um, it was one teaspoon of baking soda, uh, four teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, one cup, which are two sticks of unsalted butter at room temperature, half a cup of granulated sugar, one cup packed brown sugar, and two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. And then we added the two large eggs and the two cups of chocolate chip cookies. Oh, mm -hmm. And for those of you who recently registered, um, I do see here that nine of you recently registered today. And if you did not receive the ingredients, it is because of that. You recently registered, so um, you won't receive the ingredients towards the, until the end of the class. For those of you who did register ahead of time, you should have received an email, at least three emails from me, um, regarding the ingredients, the supplies, and um, the instructions on how you could participate in this course. So now that we have camera one settled in, you should see, okay, Heather, I think we, we now, you're back. Okay. All right, so now we're going to add our flour and the proper way to measure flour. So this is the mixer. And I know we have a habit of where we store the flour, we kind of like dig in and scoop it. But what you're doing is you're packing too much flour into the cup. So it's recommended that either you have another mix, um, measuring cup or a spoon and just kind of like gently put the flour in until you get to a cup like so. And then you can kind of shake the access out and then you have a cup. So we're gonna add one cup in and we're gonna go ahead and add the baking powder, which is one teaspoon. And then we're gonna add the baking, um, no, excuse me, that's the baking powder. I mean the baking soda, which is one teaspoon and then the baking powder, which is a quarter teaspoon. And then we're gonna put the mixture down and then we're gonna Mix it on slow speed. You said on slow speed, Heather? On the first, yeah, on the first speed, the slowest speed, you want to mix it. Until just combined, and then we want to lift it back up, and then we want to add in another cup. And we're going to measure it the same way.
and shake it and make sure we got. So this is two cups. So the recipe calls for two and one half cups. So here's the one half cup. So we're just gonna go ahead and measure it and get it in there. Cause we'll wanna, like I said, we don't wanna over mix it. Cause we still have to add the chocolate too. Okay, so we put this down and put it on the lowest speed and mix it. And then at this point, you can turn the mixer off and then we can just go ahead and add the chips. You can fold them in or you can um, use, you know, you can mix them with the paddle. So I have in this bag, I kind of decided to do something a little bit different. So I'm using chocolate chips, but I'm also using peanut butter chips and mini Reese's peanut butter cups. Can you hold that a bit higher, Heather, before you put it in the mixing bowl? Okay, there we go. That's what we want to see. Yeah, Perfect. so these Thank the peanut you. butter chips are down here. The peanut butter cups are up here and then the um, chocolate chips. Yeah, Heather, you're gonna have to hold it for a second because there's just a little delay. Okay. So I just measured them out. This is two cups combined. Well, that's two cups combined. Got it. Right. So basically what I did was I put one cup semi-sweet and then half a cup of peanut butter and half a cup of the peanut butter cup to make two cups. And we do have a question, I'll Heather. Just put a little bit is, of them in. Uh -huh. is, all of, is all of that going in the mix? The chocolate chip? Right. I'm, I'm going to do it in two parts. I'm going to put half the chips in and mix it, and then I'll put the other chips in. I want to push the dough off. And once again, it's it's two cups of chips. Right, two Heather? Cups. Yes, two cups of All chips. Right. It's a chocolate chip cookie. The chips are the star. Okay. And mix it as much as you can. Um, in here, it's a little cold, so the butter is soft, but it's not as soft as it would be if the um, house was room temperature. Okay, so. I have a question. Yes. If I wanted to use um, some nuts, could could I replace part of the chips? And if so, how much? Yes, it, it depends on how much you like nuts. So I would do if you're if you're someone that really likes nuts, I would do one cup chocolate chips, one cup nuts. But if you don't really want a lot of nuts, then I would do one and a half cups of chocolate chips and then half a cup of nuts. Okay, thank you. Welcome. So I'm going to take the paddle out so I can scrape the. So can you guys see the dough? Yes, we can see the dough. Okay. There's another question, Heather. Uh, question uh -huh. is Has the flour been pre sifted? Yes, I did. I pre uh, that's a good question. Thank you for reminding me. You always want to um, sift the flour. And I did sift the flour before um, I put it in a bowl. Thank you, Heather. Can you buy pre-sifted flour to use? Uh, I, think, I don't think so. Um, a rule of thumb is you you really want to sift your flours because sometimes because you know they're um, packaged, manufactured in a factory, and sometimes extra particles will get into your flour. So you want to make sure you sift this flour. So 
you know, you can catch, or, or sometimes they, it gets lumpy. And so you want to be able to, you know, catch the lumps or the break it up. So. So Heather, this is, um, what is the difference between all purpose flour and baking flour? Baking flour? Okay, well, all purpose flour is um, generally a flour that you, you can use for most pastries, but then they have bread flour that is usually used for um, more delicate flavor, uh, pastries like um, croissants or um, danishes or cinnamon rolls. And then you have self-rising flour and that has all of the leavening ingredients that you would need. So you wouldn't have to add baking powder or baking soda. So it has all that in there. So like when you're making quick biscuits or um, quick muffins or quick breads, then you can use self-rising flour and you can omit that. And then they also have pastry flour too. That's used in a lot of French baking. Thank you. Heather, I have a question. I'm a little anal. I don't like to waste anything. <laughs> you spend all that time making your dough. You want all of it. Heather, I have a question. Your um, mixer looks very impressive and expensive. So uh, for people that don't bake a lot, what would you recommend? What kind of mixer? Because I have a hand mixer. It doesn't look anything like yours. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you very much. Actually, it wasn't really that expensive, but it was a new, I'm, I'm, never, I'm not really familiar with this brand, but I just, um, I thought it, like you, I thought it looked cool and I liked the color, so I got it, but I found it at home goods. But you can get like um, Macy's, they have Sunbeam, or you can go to Target or Walmart, they sell it too. They have a really good uh, mix, like a beginning mixer, but the best mixer is um, KitchenAid. Now those are pricey. Thank you. How many mixers do you use, Heather? <laughs> um, well, I have my favorites, um, but I have like about six mixers. But um, my mother had a KitchenAid. When I first started, I used her KitchenAid. Her KitchenAid is about 30 years old, but it still works. And so I like using that one, but then I went out and bought another one that was similar to hers. So I use that one most of the time. I have one that's called Big Red. It's a big um, six quart mixer. It's a KitchenAid, and but it's in a it's still in a box because I like to. I, I've gotten spoiled because I like to have two mixing bowls to work with. So I like to have a clean one every time you know I'm working. So if I'm using one, then there's a clean one ready for me to. And so on my big red, I have to get another bowl before I start using her. Thank you. Any more questions? I, I don't see any more coming in the chat right now, um, Emma. No one's coming into the chat, but um, no one. Uh, Barbara Riley, go ahead and unmute yourself. Barbara, you still on mute? You, uh, you you lessened the sugar, right? So the recipe called for a quarter, a, a half a cup of sh a granulated sugar, and you lowered it to a fourth, fourth, right? No, 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 no. It's it's a half cup. I think it was when you, sweet. I was telling a story where where you were supposed to. No, no, no. I, 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 I was telling the story about um, reading the recipe before you start, and I was giving you an example when I didn't really read the, the recipe like I should have. And so I added, um, I was supposed to, yeah. Okay, so it's the way it is, it should be, right? It's, yeah, the way that it's um, on the paper that you guys received, that is the recipe. Thank you. Heather, while we're waiting, can you go over the recipe again? Just read it over for our audience, for those who don't have it, and yes. tell us up to what point you're at right now. Okay, so it's so you have two sticks of butter, which is one cup, and then we get we added one cup of brown sugar, 
half a cup of granulated sugar. Then we added two eggs, one at a time. And then we added our two teaspoons of vanilla. And we mixed everything. And then we added two and one half cups of flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, and one fourth teaspoon of baking powder. So we have mixed everything. And so we have our dough. And then at this point, we would re refrigerate it because it gives the, um, the dough a chance for the flour to get hydrated, um, all the flavors to kind of marry together, and for the butters to kind of solidify. So like, because when we were talking early with the temperature being 375, but remember I told you to preheat your oven to 350. And then you also want to check on your cookies like five minutes into baking. Okay. But when you put it in, when you chill your dough, it kind of slows down the baking um, process a little bit and it prevents the cookie from spreading. Because you know how sometimes you see those, like the cookies is big and it's a flat and they're crunchy. So chilling the dough will help keep um, the form and keep it kind of um, like a thicker cookie and slow down the, the baking process just a little bit. And you have a chewier cookie. Okay. Any more and questions? So, uh, yeah, I have one. Yeah, Peggy, go ahead. How long would you leave it in the refrigerator, Heather? No. Um, most, most bakeries, they will, well, for me, I like 24 hours. I know on the recipe it said um, three hours, but I like to leave it in the refrigerator for at least um, 24 hours, and then I bake what I need, and then I have a, a um, seal container that I would put the rest of the dough in and then freeze it. And you can freeze it most say that you can freeze it up to about three to four months. Although I've had cookie dough for six months. If you package it right and there's no air getting into the container, you can leave it in the freezer for up to six months. No. So Heather, Heather, this is Godfrey. Yeah. Um, hi Godfrey. Hi. Um, so after you refrigerate it, right, for three hours or more, and then you want to put it on, you, then mm -hmm. you put it directly into the cookie sheet, right? How do you scoop it? How do you, um, how do you scoop it into the, the cookie sheet? Do you have to flatten it down at all? Or just one scoop or how does it work? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we we're gonna see pretend that. like we, like we refrigerated the cookie dough. And yeah. so, I'm gonna bring my baking sheet over. Hold on one second. And I have my, if you have a non-stick cookie sheet, that would be great. If you don't, and you have a baking tray like I do, I put parchment paper down so that it doesn't stick. And I have two scoops. Um, this one is, size of this one, I forgot what size this one is. This one is a, 18 and then this one is a a 16. So can you hold that up, Heather, just a bit on the camera? Okay. So this is the scoop that I would probably use, but when I do farmers markets, I usually sell big cookies. So this is the scoop that I use for farmers market. So however size cookie dough, I mean, however size cookie you want, I mean, that's the scoop that you use. So we're going to okay, use Heather, these. Heather, this is a point. We're going to just stop you for a second, and we're going to move that the mixer out of the way. We're going to stop the camera so that you can um, place okay. the um, sheet in front of it so that they can see, okay. so they can see you. So okay. we're going to stop that while Heather just makes this quick change. Everyone just for a second. We do have, we do have ahead, one Anna. question from Pearly. Thank you, Nicole. Pearly, go ahead and unmute yourself. Yes, I'm, I was just going to say that um, I was looking at the cookies that it's supposed to make. Is it 18 to 20 um, cookies for, for the recipe we've just followed? 18 to 20 cookies. Um, I didn't hear that. 
uh, how many cookies is it 18 to how many should we expect out of this particular batch? I know that in the past I'll follow a recipe uh, for one of my, and, and it's supposed to be oatmeal cookies I was making at that time. And it says it's supposed to make three dozen. Well, I didn't get three dozen out of it, but I found out later that they really wanted me to have smaller, smaller scoops or, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, I think the standard, it's on this recipe and what she recommends for this one, because I, it didn't, um, on here, I didn't see how many cookies, but usually you can get like two dozen cookies, two to three dozen, but it really depends on how big your cookies are. And with this right. one, she, um, I read, I see. she said measuring like a, a three tablespoons. So it's not really a big cookie. And you should probably okay. get about what, 20, 24, 36 cookies, but it really okay. depends on how big your, your scoop is. Okay, thank you. That's welcome. Thank you. Okay, Heather, is your camera set up so we can look at the cookie sheet? I mean, as the mixer moves, so we can. Oh, she's doing right, that I'm for everyone. Right Give it to my. Thank you. And while you're doing that, I just had a comment that I'm frustrated because if I'm if I want some cookies, I don't want to wait 24 hours. <laughs> I didn't realize. What did you have... say? You say you eat them up? <laughs> you no, know, I'm saying, you know, when you're in the mood to make cookies, I never uh -huh. knew that some people. Wait three hours or twenty four hours, so that's kind of frustrating. But yeah, I guess, I guess yeah, yeah, that's with baking. Cooking is much quicker. Baking is is patience. Because okay. I remember when I was in um, pastry school, um, we were going to make croissants, and I was like, yes, <laughs> oh my god, the process to make the croissant. It took us two days to make those croissants. Mm two days but they was good though we finally finished them <laughs> so i wonder so, how they do it like like in france they have uh, fresh croissants every day and mm -hmm. they must I, and I know they get up at five in the morning yeah. Days, right yeah because yeah, it's a process you have to um because you have to proof the dough because you have to have a chance for it to rise and uh, i'm trying to remember because it's been a while since i made croissants but i'm thinking you have to proof it twice which is even longer and so a lot of, unless you make croissants all the time, a lot of um, bakeries or restaurants, they will buy the croissants because it's such a long process to do that and to do the um, puff pastry. And so you can, you know, you can buy frozen puff pastries, you know, in a lot of different stores. And so, because so the process is, is really long, mm -hmm. but the end product is really good. Okay, oh, okay. camera two is back on, Thank you. Michelle. Also, um, Heather, I have two people raising their hands. We're going to go with Barbara first, and then we'll jump over to Priscilla. Go ahead, Barbara. Answer it. The having your, having your uh, dough ready is to put it in the freezer, like she said, and then you can make it faster. So have That's it. right. Good supply right. in your freezer. Yes, <laughs> right. good idea. Cookie dough. Yes, well, good. Good idea. Is that what Go ahead, Priscilla. Okay. Priscilla, you're on mute. Two questions. When you're freezing the cookie dough, is it just frozen as a dough or have you already scooped the cookies out to be uh, in form? Is it just the dough you're freezing or have you scooped them already yeah. to the cookies? Oh, no. What I, what I do is I make the dough and I put it in a container so I have to scoop it every time I want to make cookies. But if you want to save time, you can scoop it ahead of time on your cookie sheet, put it in the freezer. So that the scoops, the cookie dough will um, be frozen or get a little bit harder, and then you can dump them into like a Ziploc bag or a Tupperware, and then you can pull them out and you can just take the scoop that's already um, pre-scooped, and then you can bake. Okay. But I don't do that because also, I have to. My freezer has to be able to. Um, I have to maximize my my freezer space, I, so I don't have. So I just put them in a container, the cookie dough in a container, and I stack them up, label them. And then if I'm going to make cookies, then I um, usually take the dough and put it in um, my outside refrigerator and let it um, defrost there. Okay. And then um, I'm ready to go. Okay. And the other question is, does it matter whether I freeze it in the freezer compartment of the refrigerator or freeze them in a deep freezer? The dough. No, it doesn't matter. Just freeze them. Yeah. I mean, you know, for your home, for me, I have to be separate. So I can't really freeze what I sell 
to the public right. in my home refrigerator. So I have a separate refrigerator outside the garage for the business, and I have two separate freezers out in the, my patio for my um, dough and you know whatever I need to put. So I keep my stuff separate. Okay, would they last, if I put them in a deep freezer to freeze the dough, would it last longer than putting it just in the regular refrigerator freezer? Or does it no, matter? A freezer is a, is a freezer. It's just, you know, I, I, the, the deep freezer I got because I needed storage space. And okay. I make I make like about 15 different flavors of cookies. Okay. And so I always have at least... Um, eight to ten different flavors on hand okay. so that's a, and then i always um i usually double the recipe so i have a lot of dough so i have to have big containers and they have so that's why i have the um the deep freezer okay i understand thank you while you're scooping i think miss myra has a question but while you're scooping keeping you okay. on time <laughs> yes when you um what comes down to the freezer you thaw them out for uh, a minute or? Let's it again, I'm sorry. When you take them out of the freezer, do you like defrost them first before you put them on the pan? No, if you, if you put them like I do in a um, container, then you want it to defrost in the refrigerator so you can scoop them out. But if you pre-scoop them, then you do not have to defrost them. You can just make sure that the dough doesn't stick together. You know, your, your balls don't stick together. You can just take however many cookies you want to make and put them on the, the baking sheet, and then you can go ahead and uh, bake them. You don't have to defrost them. They can go straight into the oven, frozen. Okay. Thank you, Heather. And while you're scooping, go ahead and continue that. Um, we have one more question coming in from the chat. Um, any recommendations on what type? I don't know if I'm looking at the right one. Is this the right one? Um, any recommendations on what type of brown sugar to use? Um, you can use. Um, most recipes call for light brown sugar, but I'll give you a little tip for me. Oops. Sorry, Heather, you're on mute. Some... Can you hear me now? There we go. Yes, now we can. Go ahead. Sorry okay. about that. Okay. okay. So, most, so recipes, most standard recipes, standard recipes, they call for light brown sugar. So, they also have dark brown sugar, and it just gives you more of a, um, a deeper molasses, caramely flavor. And so I tend to use both. I like the combination of both light brown sugar and dark brown sugar. But it's really Thank your you. preference. It's really your preference. Okay, we have one hand up coming from Barbara. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Barbara. How long does it take to defrost the whole batch? Um, if you take it out the night before and you could put it in your uh, refrigerator, it should be ready to go by the morning, but you probably want to take it out of the refrigerator and leave it out for maybe 15 minutes, you know, because it'll still be cold. So you, you kind of want it, you know, to break that chill off so that you can scoop it. Thank you, Heather. So right now it's just scooping, right, Heather? Right now you're just so scooping. So is anybody ready dough. to put your cookies in the oven? Yeah. Right. So I, I have the sheet ready. I only have six cookies on here. Usually on my cookie sheets, I, I get 12. But I just, I don't know how um, these are going to spread Ms. out. Miss Pearlie, I think, has on, her, is on ready. Miss Pearlie, did you raise your oh. hand? Are you ready? Well, I, I'm ready. Do I put it's in the refrigerator? And I thought we we're going to chill it overnight, and I didn't think we we're going to see it today. Uh, but uh, yeah, I can take I can take it out and put just, just maybe two or three. Yeah, you can, you, can make, you can go ahead and make a couple of them. Okay. Yeah, just go ahead and make a couple. Okay. 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 Okay.
too much of something in it. Heather, she said her consistency is a lot um, looser. I don't know if you can see this or not. Oh, we can't see it with your screen. There. Uh -oh. Oh, okay. So I'll take that background off. Can you take that background? Okay, but I'm going to put some on. Godfrey, are you or Elaine baking? It's a gas ease. It's a joint effort. Gas ease production. <laughs> That's got Penny Lane. We're gonna we're gonna uh we're gonna bake some. <laughs> Elaine is, is Godfrey behaving himself? Is he participating? Hey. Hey. <laughs> I, I, I'm 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 trying. I'm I'm my patient. I tell you we need a good scooper. <laughs> you sticking your fingers in the dough, Godfrey. We need we need a scooper that like like Heather oh, is. Oh yeah. Just, just so no cookies. No cookies for Godfrey. <laughs> I'm coming to your house, Heather, to test out your cookies. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give away all these cookies. <laughs> and, who, and who else was baking? Kim, are you ready? We're going to spotlight Kim next. Kim. Okay. Okay. Yes, I'm ready. I'm Let's see your dough. Oh, look at Kim's dough. Yes. Ready okay. to fry. That looks nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, that looks nice. I made mine with raisins and nuts and applesauce instead of sugar because I don't need sugar. So we'll see how they taste. Oh, okay. Substituting raisins and nuts and applesauce. Anyone else want to share their Myra? batch, Miss Myra? How about Myra Reed? Got my timer on. <laughs> Yeah, I have a timer. Miss Miss Myra, your video is spotlight. If you want to show us your dough. Who's dough? Am I am I muted? Who's dough? 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 Who's so I may need more. I got to look at the time. But okay. How much did time? You put the, did you put the two and a half cups of flour? The two and a half cups of flour. I did. Yes, I did. But I and I used the dark brown sugar and I used raisins and I okay. put okay. pecans. I didn't have any walnuts. I love walnuts, but I put the raisins, pecans, and the chocolate chip. Okay. You can if it's really loose, you can probably try adding like a, a fourth cup of flour. Okay, yeah, she did. I think she did mention that on the recipe. I could add additional flour, but uh, I, I will with the rest of it. Let me, let me try these five I put in just now. What's the okay. timing? It's about 10 Heather, minutes. Heather, these are your um, it says nine to 12 minutes, so you want to set your timer oh. at, at 12, okay. I mean, at nine minutes to check it. Okay, uh, great. Thank so you. It's such a high temperature, you want to make sure that you. You pay attention to the cookies. Okay, great, thank you. Um, did you were you able to see Miss Myra's cookie dough? That looked healthy. Miss Myra, can you show yeah, us one more time? Good. It looked good. Good. Actually, Elaine uh, had there up too. It looks. Oh yeah, that looks good, Myra. Yeah, it looks good. Mm -hmm. Looks good. Well, if you guys yeah, Myra. See, see me picture. Yeah, there. But make sure you let me know who you are, and then I'll yeah. post you guys on my social media. <laughs> how, how you like these cookies? You like these cookies? Hold Let's on, see. we're gonna spotlight you. Hold on, Godfrey. Let um, me look at help it. me Don't find spot. Godfrey. Um, um, can you help me find Godfrey to spotlight he's him? Putting I found him. I got him. Thank if you. If he said it's Elaine cookies, then yeah, he's yeah. not taking credit. No, I'm not taking credit. <laughs> 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 you gonna eat them though? That's true. That's true. Don't let him have any of them. 
the green one. Uh, make, make it on the other side. Oh, uh, uh, Tweety. Is Tweety helping? <laughs> <laughs> okay, who else? Who else do we have? I want to show their cookie dough. I have a picture. So how many minutes? Nine? Nine minutes? Yeah, nine. Nine, nine to 12 minutes. But you want to start checking at the uh, nine minutes? You might even want to check at five. I hope everyone follows Heather. You know, Heather, tell us you're in a small business while we're waiting um, for this moment. You're, can you tell us a little bit about what's happening with small businesses out there? You're a small business owner. I know the pandemic. Right. Um, Emma, let's un, let, we can remove the spotlight and see the gallery. Thank you. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's really hurting um, small businesses. I'm lucky that I'm still getting business, but um, when I the farmers markets closed down, that kind of took about 50% uh, of my revenue. So, um, and then I have friends that um, they have, they do make hamburgers and so, but they cook on site. And so th those kind of um, people that cook on site at the farmer's market, those are the ones that are really feeling it because one of my girlfriends, she does burgers and she has not, um, she hasn't done anything since the pandemic, since they shut us down. And she, in the, the whole year, she has not done an event. She hasn't done any business at all. So, so what can we do as a community um, to support small businesses like you? Where do we find you? And 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 how do you protect yourselves in this um, pandemic? Are you pandemic? still hosting at farmers markets, etc.? Okay. Well, some farmers markets have come back and they're doing social distancing. You have to have your mask. Um, you probably have to have your sanitizer. Probably have to wear gloves. Um, but for me, you know, I'm always cleaning. I'm always washing my hands, um, sterilizing stuff. So. But it's just me, so I don't really have to social distance with anybody. But um, and then make sure then that um, you know I post on social media. They I give customers through there, and then um, I give I meet them somewhere so that they can pick up their um, pastries in a safe environment. And I always make sure that they have their mask on. I have my mask. We don't get too close past the either. Sometimes they stay in the car and they'll pop the trunk, and I'll just put everything in the trunk, or I'll just pass it to them and then they'll put it on the seat. So. Yeah, it's, it's been kind of different because I went to the farmer's market, I think, what was it? Um, the week before, I'm trying to remember, was it the week before the 22nd of February? And it was just like little chatter about it. And then when I got to that market, my manager, she was handing out um, sanitizing um, wipes and gloves and everything. And I was thinking, hmm. And then we had our glove, uh, mask and everything. And then it was like, in the blink of an eye, it was like shut down. Because I was going to the downtown Los Angeles farmer's market and everything just shut down completely. I know I, we don't want to politicize anything, but we definitely want to support small businesses. So um, in order to, if anybody needs to give a gift, like if they're sending it to the grandchildren who might be away or or things like that. Where can we go to get some of your things? And I know I have to say, I was honored to receive some for the holidays. So thank you. I do oh, appreciate so that. Um, but if I need to send my baby Gabby some cookies, how can I reach you? Um, you can reach me on social media. I'm Simply Sweets by Heather on Facebook. I'm Sweets by Heather on Instagram. A lot of you guys have my number. It's 310-528-2431. Um, you can text me, call me, and then um, I'll let you know. You tell me what you want, and we can um, talk about it, and then I'll give you um, a date and a pickup location. A quick order for provide you right both now. of the social media links in the chat. Uh, follow Heather on Facebook. The links are there in the chat and also the Instagram account. You can contact her through there. 
Miss Peggy, I'm sorry about that. Go ahead. All right. Heather, I, I have a quick order for you right now. Nisa's birthday is the 13th, and she loves your sweet potato pie because we fought over it. So I like the order right now a sweet potato pie for Nisa's birthday. And y'all better not tell her either. Okay, okay. now you so are recorded, Miss Peggy. You know she's know. going to be seeing this. You are recorded, and it is going to be going up on our YouTube channel. Oh, well, don't but, let her see it. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, Hema, I'm going to turn the agenda back to her. Back Hema, I'm going to turn the agenda back to you because I think that you have some other things going on. You're just going to be sharing a little bit about what's happening, and I think there's some polls or some questions you have. Is that what's happening next? What's happening next? That is correct. Uh, Ms. Heather uh, did provide us with a couple of a questionnaire trivia towards the end. So we do have, I do have the questions here, Heather. And Nicole, can you help me uh, see in the chat for them to submit their answers? So whoever right. answers the question correctly, they will At get the what, Heather? Two. What is? The, the first two, because I didn't really mention the second two yet. Okay, so just the first two, the two first questions. The two, yeah, the first two questions. Okay, okay. so I'm, so I can understand, um, I'm, I'm looking in the chat room for you, correct? To see who places their correct. information in the chat. And okay. Be checking your cookies. Checking My your cookies, did you off. hear? The timer just went off, check your cookies, check your cookies before we post the question. Right, so, so check your cookies and then rotate the pan. So the cookies that are in the back will be in the front and vice versa. Okay, Heather, I'm gonna wait on you to let us know uh, for the questionnaire. And once okay. again, please submit your answers in the chat. And then whoever wins, what do they get, Heather, as their prize, if they answer the question correctly? You get cookies. You get these cookies, these wonderful cookies. All I right. have some that I've already made. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like using high temperatures for making cookies. They're a little bit brown, but they still taste good. Look at that. Oh, that's so good. That was good. Oh, hold it up again, Heather. Thank you. You just kind of put it to the computer. Heather, what time am I supposed to come to your house? What time I'll be back? <laughs> Virtual. I know you can pick them up. <laughs> Okay, so the first question is going to go now in the chat. First question is, are you ready, Nicole? Um, um, yes, I'm ready. We're are, we having okay. are we supposed to put our answers in the chat or how do we answer? Yes, just answer in the chat and I'm looking um, for your answers. And Ms. Delano, we're trying to work on that question that um, you posed. We're not sure if we're verifying why that's happening. All right, first question is, what is the first thing you should do when baking? Please type in your answer in the chat. Yes, Miss Peggy. Whoa. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kim had a good one. Um, let's read them off, Emma. Okay, so the, the correct first, answer. That's what I said. Hold on. The first two that came in, Hema, was Miss Peggy was the first one. And then, um, I'm sorry, Miss Delina was first. And then I think Miss um, Peggy was next. Is there a difference between preset and preheat? Stop. Or are they the same no, thing? should be the same. They're the same thing? Yeah. Put it All right. <laughs> okay, so the correct answer is from Heather. The correct answer is preheat your oven. 
Miss Peggy has pre. I mean, Miss Delina has preset. Heather and Miss Peggy was the. They came in so next to each other. <laughs> okay. So is that so are Delina, you taking Ms. one Peggy? answer per person? Is that how you're doing it, or what are you? What are your? Oh, we take both. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I have down Delina and Peggy. Okay. All right. Oh, is that it? Just one question. No, hold on. No. I have one more. You are, okay. you can. Thank you, Arvin. Yeah, Miss Delina, Miss Peggy, you're admitted from the, this. We want to give all participants an opportunity. Right. Okay. You that way. Okay. But Godfrey had a good question, and so did Kim. Wash your hands. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, that, that should have been the first one, really. That should be the first one. I'll keep my cookies later. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. I got your response. Thank you. All right. So the second question is going into the chat. And three, two, and one. There it is. First question. Second question is: What is the second but important thing you should do when baking? Kim. Kim, it Kim is, is the first is to correct. respond. And she is correct. The we correct response the is to read the recipe. Taking the first two, Heather, Kim, and yes. Godfrey and Elaine, read uh -huh. recipe, read directions. Right. So I have Kim and Godfrey and Elaine. Me and Elaine are separate, so you both. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. And. Emma, yeah, just washing Emma. up now. She's just washing up now. Okay, was that the <laughs> end of you? And I believe just the first two, right, Heather? That's it. All right. Are, are you? What's that? That's four. We can do first three, right? For both. Okay. Because I might have enough. <laughs> okay, so. Here's the third question, and it's going right into the chat. Here it goes. Third question is, when was the chocolate chip cookie invented? Oh, she didn't go over that <laughs> one. I know I didn't go, I didn't go into that. But no? if you can quickly okay. write quick. Or a wild guess. Oh, she's allowing you to Google it. First answer. Google. It is you know, here. this is a this is a beaut because oftentimes you can't Google it. We get don't no, no Googling. <laughs> so close, Barbara. You were very close. <laughs> what was Barbara's? She put 1920. Oh, that was close. No one else said it. Come on, Google. I don't see any other Nobody responses here. Okay. Hold on. Denise, oh, Denise McLeod. 1942. And Denise, Denise Jefferson. Jefferson. 1930. What year? Okay. Nope. Nope, not yet. Sorry. McLeod, 1933. Nope. Delina, you're very Delina's close. Delina's close. Well, Miss Delina, you're, you can't do this one. <laughs> I don't want to it's say you're excluded won. from voting. That's just you should. Nobody should be excluded from voting. Yeah, I know that you're going to skip me. I just wanted to have a stab at it. To say it, yes. Um, you're close, Caroline. <laughs> but doesn't it depend no on one you? yet? <laughs> Not yet, but they're so close. Just a minute. What resource oh, are you just using? a minute. I use Wikipedia. Oh wow, 1847. Nope, not that one pretty. Sorry. <laughs> Forget it. Oh my god, Nicole. What are you doing? When was chocolate chip? Oh, chocolate chip cookie invented. What year is that? Here's a hint. The lineup was very close. Right. I, I was there. Frida. Frida got it. Oh, Frida got it. 
Frida. 1938. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, but my source says 1937 when, when Ruth Graves Wakefield of the Toll House Inn in the yeah. uh, town of Whitman, Massachusetts added a put up chunks mm -hmm. of semi sweet Nestle. So it just depends on the source you're using, too. Right. Well, I was there. What does Hershey say? Okay. <laughs> All right, Emma. Heather. All right, well. I did. Th those were the uh, questions. You guys so, uh, your cookies out? We don't want any yeah. brown cookies. No, burn up cookies. <laughs> I can smell your cookies. Take your cookies out. We have one hand up. Go ahead, Ms. Barbara. Substitute <clears throat> gluten-free flour for regular flour. Um, you know what? You can, but um, just remember when you replace something, you have to, I mean, when you take something out, you have to replace it. And so um, with the gluten-free flour, um, you have to add a, uh, what is that ingredient? Um, xanthan gum. What? That is xanthan gum. It's usually in oh. the, the mix, the gluten-free mix that adds the <clears throat> gluten back kind of to the, the flour. But it has a weird, kind of mouth feel consistency. But you can use like almond flour, you can use um, some other kind of nut flour. Equal amount? Equal well, amount. Okay. I, I have I something to say it. about that because I do a lot of gluten-free baking and okay. I, I learned that some of the, the flours are so heavy that you have to half, almost half the amount. Oh really? Yeah, they'll dry your cookies out, but usually it's cup for cup. Mm -hmm. But it also depends on which flour. They said the, what is it? Um, Bob's meal. Is it Bob's meal? Um, Gluten-free flour mix. That one's good. And then there's a um, all cup, cup for cup or something like that. That's supposed to be a good, um, but I'll get the, the name. Okay. But I just made some gluten-free cookies, but I use almond flour. It's and that's what I mean. If you like, you know, yeah. it's a really good cookie. <laughs> Here, here, my cookies. Oh, have. Nice Whose cookies are those? Oh, Whose cookies are those? Elaine, not Godfrey's. Are those yours, baby? Oh, Godfrey's. Elaine. Oh, nice. Go ahead, Miss Pearly. Can you see them? Yeah, we can see them. I, I, could, I couldn't take my background screen. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing I, I crowded my cookies too much, I found out. So I should have had much smaller drops. And I, you know, it just looks like I made them too big, and then and they all and I had them too close together. I didn't still taste good. Just use this for a, a sample. That'd be can. good. Oh, okay. It came, yeah, and my dough came out okay. There's the. I was trying to, I'm sorry about that. I couldn't take the background off, so I'm sorry about the background. I got stuck with the. Well, wait, I was going to show you my dough again, but that's fine. Okay, thank you, thank you, Heather. Oh, you put them in a pie pan. <laughs> All right, we also see Myra's cookie. There she's holding it up. It tastes pretty good. Come on, Myra. Show it again. Myra, can we see Very your cookie, cookie again? Oh, she turned off the camera. Oh, she didn't want us to see her. Here's my cookie. Oh, ah. <laughs> Here's my cookie. <laughs> no, that doesn't count. Yeah, I'm back already. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anybody oh, else? Would like to... Myra's eating her cookies. <laughs> oh, no, that's why. Tell us how they taste. Do they taste good? Yeah, how do they come yeah. out? Where is my cookie? Myra, you're on mute. Yeah, a little bit oh, yeah. darker than I would want them. But here's yeah. my How do they taste? How are your cookies? Yeah. Are you guys eating them? <laughs> Yep, she's, yep. Guess, go ahead, Barbara. So, uh, Heather, it looks like you've, uh, your cookies did flatten out. I thought the idea of refrigerating them overnight was going to make it um, uh, taller and less spread it, spreading. No, they, they, actually, they are thicker. You can tell um, from, yeah, they are thicker. Yeah, this is what I did today. And then this is... 
yesterday I just baked straight after um I mixed the dough. You can so there is a difference. There is a difference. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. They all taste the same when you dip them in the milk. <laughs> <laughs> Your evaluation is in. We're hoping that you did enjoy this course. Hema um, and Chef, what is coming up for your next one and what day is that? So for the next class, uh, I believe Heather, you mentioned you'll be doing, um, it's gonna be on April 6th at 1.30 and it's savory, is that correct, Heather? Yes, so we are going to do an Asian noodle salad. Oh. So if you like Asian flavors, you'll like this salad. Um, it's pretty, it's vegan, actually, but you can um, grill shrimp. I'm going to grill some shrimp, and I'm going to grill probably a steak. Mm -hmm. And so you can top the salad off with either the shrimp or the steak. Or you, mm -hmm. if you don't want any meat, you don't have to put any meat on it. Full of vegetables, full of flavor. Perfect. And the last session, it's going to be on May 11 at 1.30. And is that vegan dessert? It's going to be vegan. I don't know yet what it's going to be, but it's going to be a vegan dessert. All right. So mark your calendars, ladies and gentlemen. And please register in advance for this class so that you may receive the ingredients, the supplies, and uh, the materials that you will need to participate, just like Ms. Pearlie. Gosh, received a list of did. that's the list of right Hema the that, list of that is correct right. thank you that is correct the list of from our chef um Heather will provide me with that information as soon as possible so that uh, you'll be prepared for the class and you can participate in mm -hmm. so um, other than that I did share um Heather's information in the chat for you to follow her on her Instagram or contact her through the Instagram account or Facebook um they're all the way towards uh and they are they are in the chat there they are repost them again you could contact her through there so i have a question nicole when when it's when you don't see the three dots because i've been on other uh chats not not with ollie and no one knew what i was talking about when i said oh yeah you can record it what it's supposed to have the three dots at the bottom what do they have to do to set it that way to record or to 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 um save the chat I'm, I can't tell you what's going on that the chat is not allowing us to save. There was a recent um, update, I believe. Arvin is aware of it and he's looking at it and we're checking on this. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I thought my video was on. And we're checking on the reason that it, that you can't for this particular one. We're also going to be checking the settings. So um, I can't tell you why we can't. Okay, but maybe, maybe you can let us know in the future how it could be set. For that for like if you're doing a, a chat with someone else in another organization or something and they don't know what you're oh yeah about. so generally yes ma'am it, it's in there your settings so i can't tell you and we generally use a template so we have the same meeting so i don't know why it's not showing up here right now but arvin um is in the meeting with me and he already pointed it out and so he's um investigating it for me okay other than that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming into this session. Um, Heather, um, any last minute tips you want to share with the class before we exit? No, just finish baking your cookies. Thank you for joining my first class. And if you take pictures, make sure you send them to me. You can text them to me, but make sure you put your name so I know who the cookies belong to. Okay, and I'll post and share them videos. next class so that we can share them in the class with your workshop. Get, right. get them to us and we can share them at, at, um, in the next classroom. If you, Barbara uh, and Peggy have their hand up. Um, Go ahead, I, Barbara. I've gotten into the evaluation, but I can't type anything in. Is there a secret? <coughs> uh, we'll help I'll you right that. now, Ms. Barbara. Um, I'll help okay. you right now in just a bit. Go ahead, Peggy. I see your hand up. Yes, I have it. Could you give your number again? It's 310 528 2431. 2431. Okay, thank you. I'll put that in the chat. Thank you. Emma, can you let them know how they'll get their cookies? 
I think by yes, um, so that is correct. Thank you, Heather. So the lineup: Peggy, Kim, Godfrey, Elaine, and Frida Stovall. I will contact you via email regarding how you could get your prize, which are the cookies. Other than that, um, thank you all for coming in today. This concludes our session. Please stay to um, fill out the evaluation. Barbara, go ahead and assist you in just a bit. Uh, everyone else, thank you so much. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I say some, my question? Oh, go ahead, Delina. Yeah, I just want to say to Heather, thank you so much for um, stimulating uh, our senses more than one sense. I mean, we had like the hear we we could we almost could hear the the crunching of the cookies and <laughs> see it. some of us could taste it, but you know we thank couldn't you. smell it unless you were doing it. So you know you got a lot of our senses today. Okay, thank you. First time that. ever <laughs> on Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. The time, right? Can't get the time here. Okay. I'm, it allowed me to get type the time now. In here. Okay, here's the evaluation link. So if you just click on the link, it will take it will take you out of Zoom and it will open up a new tab. Okay, I got one. I got it. I think I got it. Okay, okay. I got mine. The course name you could put virtual baking workshop. Oh, I didn't know the name of it. I just said cooking with Heather. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh, you could put that too. That's okay. okay. That's okay. okay. That's okay. okay. That's okay, Miss Peggy. That's all right. We'll be able to identify it. Um, today's date is March 9, 2021. The time. Um, you could put the time that it started at 1 30. I did. Hi, Emma. This is Arvin. Hey, Arvin. I just wanted to make sure if you're able to, um, since you're the host, maybe you'll have a, um, a save of the of the the chat. So maybe just send it over to Miss Delena. Okay. But that that only I'll happens after you close out the uh, the uh, the Zoom meeting. Okay, I'll save it and I'll send it over to Delina. Thank you, Arvin. Okay, and for the instructor and facilitator, you could put um, Heather Slater.